You know, I, I think I want to just tell a little story first. Good idea. Yeah, that'll help. Uh, I, I, I love to play ba loved to play basketball. Now I, I still love the idea of basketball. I just don't, don't do so much of it. But, um, and I like to watch basketball, not nearly as much as I liked playing it, but I remember watching my favorite team, not mentioning any names, but John Stockton played there for several years. Uh, watching my favorite team, and I, I was in a, a doctor who I'd gotten to know fairly well. I, I was in his office, and, and uh, we were talking about, you know, talking about basketball. This has probably been 10, 15 years ago, and, and uh, this is when they were doing really well, and I was really excited because two guys on that team were, were heroes of mine, and I said, yeah, we're going to get to see them, and, and, and we're having a little conversation, and I said, I believe that they could win this year, and he said, no. No. What do you mean, no? I, I think they can. I think they have everything together. I think they could go all the way. And he said, no, they really don't have a chance because, he said, this is the way it is. And this is someone who, who he'd come from California and, and he had connections in that realm. And uh, I still don't know if he was right or not, but he said, it doesn't matter how hard they fight or how well they play, this game is going to be controlled. They won't make the final playoffs because they don't have a big enough draw. They wouldn't be able to bring in enough money. There's not enough draw in that team. He said, so they won't, I guarantee you, Lynn, they will not make the final playoffs yet. It's like, what? So they're going to go to all of this battle and all of that? He says, because, he said, they're, they're, the referees he says, if you'll notice, he says, you watch and just see if I'm not right. He says, the referees will control just a couple of situations that can turn the game around just to make sure they lose by at least a little bit. And I was like, no, no, that can't be. Well, sure enough, that's, that, that's what I watched. That's what happened. And, and I was watching through that lens thinking, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. No matter how hard they fight, they're not going to win. They didn't, they, they didn't win. They, they've, uh, they've never won uh, at, at that level. So I was really bummed, but I'm just here to tell you that, that that's where the devil's at. I'm going to read a little scripture here, but in, in all his effort, we already know he doesn't have a chance. He's not going to win. There will be some skirmishes that happen. There's going to be some, some games, some battles leading up to the, you know, to, the, to the big event. But he's already lost. He's already been defeated. And we know that. So his efforts are efforts in futility if he was only smart enough to know that he's already defeated. You know, there was a time that when Jesus was about to be crucified that you could just imagine, imagine having being him or watching him. It's like, got him. Got him. I've put him to death. Game over. I win. What he didn't know, understand, or realize that that was all a part of God's plan. And what he thought was a big victory was a huge loss. Because Jesus would arise from the grave in three days, having defeated completely death, hell, and the grave. So, yeah. But now I want to read you a scripture. John 10.10. 10. Now that you have that understanding, that we're talking about a defeated foe here. John 10.10. 10. The thief, or we could just say in this case the devil, say with me, the devil, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I, Jesus, red letters here, I have come that they... And who is they? They's us. That us, that we, they, we, may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Let's just, let's just say that. Abundant life. For me. You believe it? You buy into it. Then you receive it. Abundant life. What does abundance mean? Abundantly is in large quantities, plentifully, plentifully, yeah. 
Life, living life large, plentifully. That's what God desires for it, um, for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, that you will have abundant life. You believe it? Yes. You receive it? Yes. All right. Now, I want to talk about James 1 2. Let's uh, move to James, first chapter, second verse. James, first chapter, second verse, and I am almost there. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings, my brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. 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 One of those, uh, one of those fruits of the Spirit. Patience. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So, we're going to go through some trials. We're promised abundant life. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil so that we could have abundant life. Yet, we're going to go through some trials. Right? Anybody that's lived a life a little bit knows that there are some trials in life. But we're called to be overcomers. God's got his hand on us. We're overcomers. With him, we can, we will overcome. I want you to turn with me to Revelation 3.20. Last time I preached, we ended up there, I believe. Revelation 3, verse 20. To him. Now let's just you know, start. That's 21. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. So he comes knocking at the door. If we hear the voice, we answer the door. He's going to come in and dine with us. Verse 21. To him who overcomes. Are you an overcomer? Then let's say, I'm an overcomer, I'm an overcomer. Through, Jesus through Jesus Christ. So, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. I went over this here a couple of weeks ago when I preached last. It's not by my throne, beside me. It says, I sit with me on my throne. As I also, aver, aver, as I also overcame, sat down with my father on his throne. Now, this, this overcomer, it's not, I, I mean, I've read that and I've pondered that and, and I've just sat and listened. It's like, how am I an overcomer? How am I an overcomer? I'm an overcomer through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. How do I overcome? I overcome by sitting on his throne with him. The first thing that I have to overcome is unbelief is unbelief. When I'm an overcomer, I have overcome unbelief to grab a hold of faith, to trust and believe, to receive the benefits that he has for me. So I've overcome the unbelief, I've established my faith, and in so doing, I am becoming an overcomer. You got that? Becoming an overcomer. By establishing my faith, my trust, and my belief in Him, I'm overcoming unbelief. Okay. So, as an overcomer, I'm granted to sit with Him. And with Him, I can overcome anything and everything. His Word tells me so. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. Let's just say that together. I can do all things.
through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. So I am an overcomer. And I'm granted to sit with him on his throne in high places, looking down from an eagle's standpoint, not through the trenches. Now, now that we're just getting started, that we're just getting warmed up, you are in for a treat. Are you ready? You ready for another testimony? We got a testimony right now of an incredible overcoming testimony. Cassie, this, this young lady, I, I, I'm so proud of this young lady, uh, and I'm very well connected with this young lady. This is my daughter-in-law, who I have watched for now. How long have you guys been married? 25 years this July. So she was five when they got married. Just take a look. 25 years this July. I've got to watch this young lady. Yeah, let's, yes, let's, let's give her a, a bally welcome. I can just tell you that having watched her grow and mature in the Lord and, and spiritually continue to mature, uh, I am absolutely blessed and you will be as well because she is indeed an overcomer in an area that so many of us struggle with. So, Thank Cass, you. love you. Love you. I need all this space. Okay, you got it, you got it. Uh, when he asked me to speak, I, I said, well, about how much time he said, well, how much time do you need? And I said, well, probably about six hours. <laughs> and he said, I'm afraid that some people might get up and leave, but, um, you know, whatever you need. Uh, I'm just so glad to be here this morning um, in this house with people that I adore, I love, um, I cherish you, and <clears throat> this community. So know that I love you. If I say anything that offends you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's out of love. But uh, I sent my husband a meme the other day that said, um, I drink coffee stronger than your feelings. Um, <laughs> if you've ever been to my house, there is some strong coffee. So um, feelings... He recognizes them, but he believes there's a time and a place for feelings. <laughs> um, now that I'm uh, 41 years old, I, uh, I get some hot flashes. I, the doctor says I shouldn't, but I do. And I get red when I get excited or nervous or embarrassed or whatever. So just know if I look like I'm about to combust, take a wild guess why. And um, I think uh, Patty's got a fire extinguisher back there for me. Um, so, thank you. Uh, I, I'm not ever sure if, I, if it's honoring to call you dad or if I should call him Pastor Lynn. I, I, it's confusing. <laughs> okay, dad. So, thank you, dad, for um, asking me to share my story. Uh, it's truly an honor and my greatest desire to bless and encourage God's people. Um, I want to share with you a story of transformation, restoration, and hope. This story is still being written, and I hope that I have years and years uh, to add to it. So uh, my, my journey starts in a, it's, I'm kind of taking you to the middle of a story here. Uh, any of you who like fairy tales? It's a little bit of a fairy tale. Um, it's a fairy tale in that I was a princess and I didn't know it. I was locked in a dark room. And instead of a knight in shining armor, I had a daddy come and rescue me. A daddy who wanted to lift me out of the fog. 
and out of the darkness. And uh, so we're going to go to the middle of my story here uh, before I was rescued. The journey that I took led me to a question. And the question was, are you all in? It took me down a path uh, that was filled with lies, with guilt, with depression, with condemnation, with regret, anxiety, and a victim mindset. I started to think, you know, all these things were happening to me, and poor me, poor me. Why, why me? Uh, this is a, it's a painful part of my life, but I really think that somebody here today needs to grasp onto and hold tight to your promises and your victory through Christ. So I'm going to share with you some uh, entries from my journal during this time. So this is very personal. And, and very painful. Thursday, 2-17-11. Here I am sitting alone, body and spirit. The rest of the family went to the state basketball game. I've gone to almost every game that the team has had. But tonight, on the most important game of the year so far, here I sit watching some stupid show about a fat guy. Sorry, I don't even know what that was. <laughs> I'm going to be real today, okay, folks? Um, it's insane how Satan can attack the things you love the most. I'm so exhausted. The exhaustion is overwhelming me to the point I am not functioning the way a person should. I feel so alone as though no other person has ever experienced what I am experiencing. I feel worthless as a wife, a mother, and I have no friends. I wonder my purpose in life. The worst part of it all is feeling that I have no control. Pills to wake up every morning and pills to go to sleep every night. What could be going on inside this one and only body I get? Has it turned against me or have I turned against it? The mind over matter has failed for a long time now. The amount of time I have felt alone has now caused me to prefer it. <clears throat> I live this lie on the outside. The person I project to others is not the person I feel I have become. What happened to the girl I once was? What happened to the goals I had? The passion for something, anything, after saying all this, here comes the guilt, and I can hear everyone say, suck it up, or you're crazy. Am I? I guess so. Do I have an excuse to be this way? A bad childhood, sexual abuse, lack of a father, or years of my dad's drinking problem? What is the root that I've let grow within me? Am I just doomed to struggle to regain control? Did I ever have control? The last two months have been horrible. The sense of normal is gone and has been replaced with guilt and hatred. The guilt is so overwhelming, my thoughts immediately wander to a desperate search for a way out. Day after day, my search always concludes with me ending my life. My hatred for myself has grown so strong, I can rarely see any other way. I have so much guilt for Sean and the kids to have to endure me. If I ended my life, maybe they would find some kind of peace. I didn't have the strength to go to Tanner's game yesterday. I just wanted to cry, but the tears wouldn't come. I just stared endlessly into space. The day is over and bedtime is approaching. Usually I relish this time with 
the Ambien I take, but I find myself looking back over the afternoon at Tanner's game, at dinner with Lynn and Renee, Kayla's phone call, and Missy's basketball game with a sense of hope. Hope of what I used to be, what I could be, what I should be, most of all, what I want to be. I'm not sure why today has been any different than the 20 hopeless days that I had that had been before this, but nevertheless, there is hope. I wonder if the acknowledgement of how bad and desperately hopeless I have felt has released something in my brain. I had a blow up on Sean when he asked me to take the car to the mechanics. The enormous weight of anxiety crept into me. Leaving the house has become so difficult. I couldn't figure out why for the longest time, but now I am coming to the conclusion it's the exhaustion. Exhaustion derived from the act of normalcy. Pretending to be normal. Maybe a complete admission of my disease would release me from the anxiety and in return, the exhaustion. Possibly that admission would help with the guilt as well. I got my delivery of lithium today. I started to take supplements. I pray that this could be a piece of the puzzle to help my condition. I also got the book I ordered today, Manic. The title kind of scares me. Admission of that title, Manic, seems to conjure ideas of crazy people shaking their heads and screaming aloud. The stigma of a mental illness has been burned into my brain. The comments made by some have devastated me and created a deep root of embarrassment about my condition making it even harder to admit I have a disease wreaking havoc on my body. This, my husband wanted me to burn. <laughs> this no longer exists. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to throw that on the floor. Give it a stomp, exactly where it deserves to be. Because I have promises that say something completely, completely different than the words I wrote in that journal. Uh, another, I like to write, so I wrote a poem at this time too. Uh, it says, pass me on by as if I'm someone who you never met or even care to, as though we never shared a dream or a wish come true, as our years meant nothing but time wasted to you. Pass me on by while I struggle to see through the shell of the person I once wanted to be. Where have I wandered and where have I gone? Am I so far away and the pain too strong? Pass me on by, for strangers are we. The girl so hopeful is not the woman you see. Not anymore. <laughs> so we'll go to the beginning, a little, little, little further back. Uh, my story starts out as a young, I would say overly talented young girl. <laughs> My siblings referred to me as the golden child, and I was the baby. I was very athletic. I competed at the highest level with my horses, and I qualified for the Quarter Horse World Championships at 12 years old. I won just about everything possible in 4-H and FFA. I won numerous buckles in rodeo. I was rodeo queen. I was Idaho State Junior Quarter Horse Association President, Student Body President. I was voted Best Smile and Eyes, Best Body. I got four kids, okay. <laughs> Give me a little slack. 
most popular, best dress, and most likely to succeed. I had it all together at the ripe old age of 15. The world was literally my stage. The problem, I had zero foundation. I, or my identity, rested on my ability to perform. People loved me when I was great. If I couldn't deliver, what did I have to offer? So what happens now? A tall, dark, handsome man walks into my life at 16 years old. And because I'm so mature and I know everything, I decided I'd have enough of my parents. And uh, we decided to make a family, to get married. 16 years old, he was 18. I'm sh I know for a fact that my entire family thought, whoa, she's got screws loose. And I'm sure the Hardys were like, oh boy. I don't know about this. Um, so then a year later, after our marriage, I have my first child. I'm 17 years old. I have a baby and a mm, relatively unsupportive husband. Uh, fishing and hunting was his priority at the time because he was 19 years old. He wasn't even grown up yet. He was still a baby himself. And I had nothing to perform other than being a mother. I had time to think about every negative experience, every wound, every rotten seed that had ever been planted in my life. I had plenty of time to think about it molestation, lack of a father, screaming, fighting, demeaning at my home. My mother who lied, saying it was out of protection, being told I was dumb, I was stupid, my nose was too big, I was too short, we were poor. I got married too young, I was too fat, I was too skinny. I had no one telling me otherwise. And I had no identity outside of my performance. I desperately searched for answers. And before long, I diagnosed myself as bipolar. See, I wasn't raised in church. My grandma took me to VBS every summer, but I had no relationship with Jesus. I didn't understand how he saw me. I didn't understand how he saw you. I didn't know love like I thought I did. I was wrong. You see, I was a one foot in, one foot out Christian. I kind of like the feeling of this, but it's Monday. And real life starts to happen on Monday. If we didn't have anything else going for the weekend, or maybe we were too broke so we couldn't go do anything fun, eh. We'll go to church, make ourselves feel kind of better. That's not the response your daddy wants to hear. Today I'll be your child, but tomorrow I got a lot of things going. I'm really busy. Our yes is a 24-7 deal. Our yes 
is now and it's later. And it's every minute in between. He wants you all in. He wants you to buy in. My husband and I coached um, softball, high school softball. And um, where's my daughter? She wasn't here. She must have went out with the baby. Um, we would tell those girls, you have to buy in. You have to believe that you were born to win, born to succeed. And if you can buy in, there's absolutely nothing that's going to hold us back. And that year, one of the years, we had all of our girls buy in. And we walked away state champions. First time in 63 years that the school had had a state championship team because our girls bought in. <clears throat> you have a choice. Are you going to be all in? When you walk out these doors today, are you leaving what you felt here behind only to pick it up next Sunday? Or are you willing to take him out the doors with you, to take him into your workplace, to take him into your home, to take him into every situation, the grocery store, wherever you go? That's our job, guys. That is our job, that when we leave this place, he's with us. Don't be... Don't be a feel-good Sunday kind of Christian like I was because life happens six days a week without church for me. I came on Sundays. I had six days for the devil to wreak havoc on my life. He had six days to speak into me because I was only hearing truth three hours a week. Three hours a week is nothing in comparison to what the devil can speak into you the rest of the time. And that's what I was listening to. That was the loudest voice in my head was what the devil was saying to me. You're worthless. You'll never be enough. Nobody will ever love you. You've made too many mistakes. So I'm going to join the crew of, um, I think it was Jeff and uh, Tim. I'm going to say a word here. Crap or get off the pot. That's what my husband would say. Excuse my language. <laughs> How long are you going to sit on the fence? It took me years of sitting on the fence and being willing to turn over my life completely. I thought maybe it was just because I was getting older, you know, and things weren't... I just was a little more laid back and wasn't quite as uptight as I used to be but it was not me. It was the Lord starting to transform me for me to start to turn over my life and realize that every situation that came into my life, he had an answer for. He had a solution for. I am a little more laid back. Four kids will do that to you. I also have selective hearing and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> all you parents totally understand. My husband says, how is it that you can have 15 things going on, but if you're on the phone and I try to say one word to you, you just, pff, you, you, you can't function. I don't, 
I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just want you to know that, you know, when you leave this place or you leave a time of prayer and you leave it without hope, you're doing it wrong. There should always, always be hope contained within this word, within your time with Jesus. And if you're leaving and you don't have hope, you better check yourself. Well, they say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. I think that I, I'm not in on the teeny boppers stuff. Uh, acronyms and stuff. I just don't, I'm not good at those. If you're looking for him through your lens of blame, of failure, you're not going to see him. If you're looking for him only in your hurt, you're not going to find what you're looking for. If you cannot see him through a lens of love. When you look for him with those kind of glasses on that are tinted with black, you couldn't see him if he kissed you on the nose. You have so much that you're hanging on to and you have allowed it to, I had allowed it to block my senses. I couldn't feel him. I couldn't hear him. I couldn't see him. Because I had this fog covering my life. So I want to read a verse to you. It's John 14, 27. And this is red letters, so let me tell you, it's important. Y'all need to listen up. Everything I'm saying, I just, I've had to say it to myself, so I'm pretty much just preaching to me. I hope you guys get something from it, too. <laughs> I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the other one I want to read to you is Philippians 4, 7 through 9. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything. Say anything. Anything. Anything we can understand, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus wants to take care of our minds and our hearts. He can only do this if you say yes. If you buy in. Because there's the whole free will thing. Doggone it. When I made that choice, the fog started to lift for me. VSSM was the start. He had been convicting my heart for a long time. 
but I wasn't ready to say yes. The day I started, the, the day I decided, de-started, decided uh, to, to go into VSSM, I filled out my paperwork and I was here in the office and I was working with Lynn and I filled out my paperwork and I reluctantly gave it to Pastor Rich because it was going to take a lot of time. It was going to take some of my weekends. It was going to interrupt my life. The day I took that paperwork in, I think I went to lunch shortly after that, and I came back, and I put my, I sat down at the desk, and I put my glasses on, and all of a sudden, these little gold flakes started, you know, coming down in my glasses. I was like, what in the, what in the world? What is going on here? It's raining gold. And the day I decided that, that initial jump, my heart started to be overwhelmed with love. Love for you. Compassion for you and for me. I started to love people like I had never loved them before. I started to be hungry to be here, to be around you. I started to be okay to be with me. <laughs> he has turned, well, I better go back to the gold story. So uh, that happened to me, and somehow I ended up over at Dad and Nene's. Christy and I were sitting at the table. I was like, the weirdest thing happened to me today. It's like this gold was coming down. I didn't, she goes, oh, I got to do Christy. Oh, you got the gold. I'm like, yeah, woo, I got the gold. What are you talking about? So then we got into VSSM and here like the first, I think it was the first video that we watched. Uh, Bill Johnson had said, you know, all these signs that make you wonder is what he calls them. That gold has been appearing on people's hands. They're finding it in their Bible. They're, you know, all these crazy things are happening. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, he gave me the gold. The day I decided to go all in. All in. He delivered with gold that day. He has turned my weakness into wisdom. And he has turned my pain into power. He has transformed my thoughts as I surround myself with a community of like-minded warriors who have got my back. I've never felt so loved in my life. I have a fabulous husband. I, I mean, I could not brag about him enough. I adore him. I wouldn't say I worship him because that's wrong. But I absolutely adore that man. But when God started revealing himself to me, love took on a whole new meaning. He lifted a head that was constantly down 
one that lived with guilt and sorrow <laughs> loved me like I never imagined. And now I am so full of love that I have to let it go. I mean, I walk into this place and I just want to love on people. I just want you to know how much you're loved. I wish, if nothing else, I could show you how God sees you. If you got just a glimpse of what he sees inside of you, you would never have an ounce of doubt. He loves so well. During this whole uh, VSSM journey, I, uh, I felt convicted to just cry out to Jesus and ask him, you know, for forgiveness. And I wanted to be able to get rid of the guilt that I still hung on to. And uh, I said, I'm so, I'm so sorry, Jesus. I'm so sorry. And I just got down on my knees and I pled and pled. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I ever doubted you. I'm so sorry I believed the lies. I'm so sorry, Jesus. And I heard him say, they weren't your mistakes. They were your journey to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that our mistakes aren't really mistakes. They're stepping stones. They're stepping stones to those high places. They're stepping stones up to the throne. I'll keep walking. I'll keep stepping. But I just want to leave you with this. A heart that had been, has been transformed and hope and love and a destiny that my father has called me to. He's called you to. You just have to make a choice. Are you going to go all in? Are you going to turn it all over? Everything. I mean everything. I read somewhere a gal had posted, and she said, you know what? I realized today that Jesus wants everything. He designed and created me. He wants to help me with my makeup. He made me an artist. He wants to help me do my makeup. That's just how he designed me. He wants to be involved in every single little thing that happens in my life. I pray for a green light. I pray for every little thing I can think of. But during this time in VSSM, I hope that's not me. I think I turned it off. That would be, is that grandma's phone? Shame, shame, shame. Oh. We're going to bring that one up another time. Uh, <laughs> don't you just love that woman? Fire. She just carries the fire. And you inspire me, Grandma Ruby. You really inspire me. She's real. She's real. Yeah. We want to be real. That's how we draw. That's how we draw people in. They need to know we're real. We aren't living one way and talking another. We make mistakes. It's part of our journey. 
So you heard me read out of that journal. You heard the words that I had spoke over myself. As the transformation started in VSSM, we were asked to prophesy over ourselves. Woo! That's hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little easier to do over somebody else. But I'm going to leave you with the words he gave me. This is me today. That is trash. Cassie, out of your mouth, you will birth new life. You will call dry bones to rise. Your words will help people to regrow limbs, repair hearts, and mend wounds. My words from your mouth will be antiseptic to festering wounds. You will carry prophecy wherever you go. I will speak to you every time you call and ask for me for revelation. I will give you your heart's desire. I have more for you than you could ever imagine. More love, more wisdom, more clarity, more patience, more co-laboring, more victory, more power, and more gifts, and exceedingly abundant grace. You are a warrior welding my mighty sword of righteousness. The battlefield is laid before you, and the enemy has been bound. We will share the victory. I love and honor your worship in secret, and I have sent my angels to guard your home and family. My favor goes before you in all situations. I love you so much, daughter, and I will continue to transfer my heart to yours boundaries will be no more the fear of man is fleeing nothing you do for me will be fruitless the office you are called to is preparing joyfully for your arrival God is so good I just hope today that I've encouraged you to go all in. I love you. I appreciate you. Be blessed. overcoming testimony, isn't it? Uh, I feel like, you know, where, where a testimony is sent out, it's then uh, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. It's like they overcame the adversary, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And as Cassie has overcome, I know that, that, that we are, are, are a people that struggles with a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression. Just so many people that, that struggle with that every day. And I want to I read a scripture, and then after that, I want, I want her to stay here because I want, as, as God starts, Holy Spirit starts dealing with your heart and saying, you know, it's time for you to get rid of the fear of man and to step into a place of, of humility because today could be the day for your deliverance, for your freedom. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as Cassie was finishing, I, I, I flipped to, to Luke 
the eighth chapter, actually in the seventh chapter of Luke, where Jesus was having, he was having lunch with a Pharisee. And a woman came in, and, uh, and Simon, the Pharisee, saw, saw this woman come in, and she went, she went to Jesus. She went directly to Jesus, and, and she s- s- just went to the feet of Jesus. She was drawn to the feet of Jesus, and she fell down, and she washed his feet with her tears, and she dried his feet with her hair, and then she poured a, a box of alabaster over the feet of Jesus. And here's what Jesus said. He, he read the thoughts of Simon, who, who, who sat there thinking, can you believe Jesus, that you're letting this, I can't believe Jesus, you're supposed to be a prophet and you're letting this sinful woman touch you. And so Jesus said back, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, She's washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. He turned to the woman and said, your sins are forgiven. Those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins? Then Jesus turned to the woman and said, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I just feel like this morning as we as we humble ourselves, as we come before Jesus in the posture of kneeling at his feet, just thinking that we're coming and we're stepping to the feet of Jesus, looking for the freedom that we really, really desire, that his desire is to set you free this morning. If you struggle, if you struggle with anxiety, if you've been diagnosed bipolar, if you, if you have any kind of, kind of struggle like that, I just encourage you right now, I'd like to just have Cassie She's shared the testimony to have her just pray over you. So if you have any kind of struggle with anxiety, uh, depression, you don't even... uh, Yeah, let's just come to the front. There's no reason. Let's just come to the front. If you struggle with anxiety, with depression, of of any, any kind like that, is there anybody else? Anybody else that's ready to be set free that's ready to be set free God has set the stage the Holy Spirit has set the stage this morning Kathy shared her her story in in humility she's an overcomer she's that's, that's, that's trash now that's behind us anybody else that struggled with as we just wait just another a few more moments on the Holy Spirit it's like today is the day today is the day for your freedom for him to break it off for him to break it off as the testimony goes forth we we claim that testimony for our own Jesus we just love you Holy no, it's Spirit, like we could get. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yeah, we just come on around, thank Colton. You, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Get pastors, get the pastors, and I want Cassie to lead. To lead, we're going to just lay hands on each one of you because this morning, today mm. is your day. Yes. He wants complete freedom for you today. Yes. All right, Cassie. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you have all the answers. You have all the answers for every situation in our life, Lord God. We just cry out to you, Lord Jesus. We just say right now that fear, anxiety, 
depression, diagnosis of bipolar or feeling bipolar, we just say right now, in the name of Jesus, be gone. You have no place in these hearts, these minds. We say, be gone. Lord, we just ask that you replace with love, with confidence, with chins lifted up, shoulders rolled back, kind of confidence. When you walk in the room, you know who you are, who Jesus made you to be. You carried him with you. You carry him with you. We just ask for complete healing over these minds, Lord, that they can just see in a new light that the fog has been lifted. They see hope. They see restoration, power, wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. You want to supply every need. We just need to open the door to you, Lord Jesus. You want to supply every need. Just turn it over to Him. Give it to Him. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. That you want to give us our heart's desire. No one wants to. No one wants to feel out of control or feel like they're less than they truly are. Lord, right now, reveal their identity, Lord Jesus. Reveal their true identity. You are a daughter or a son of the King of Kings. The King of Kings holds you, holds you in his arms. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We speak to the hopelessness and we say, be gone, be replaced with hope. Be replaced with hope. Be replaced with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. Lord, I just ask right now, when we go out these doors, Lord Jesus, that we carry you, we carry a new mind, that we have devoted ourselves to renewing our minds, Lord God, to not grabbing hold of the lies of the enemy, we just step on the enemy's head right now. We're going to squash it. We're going to say no. No, no, no. You cannot have my mind. You cannot have my body. You cannot have my spirit, my soul, my family, my home, my finances. You cannot have me. You cannot have victory. Only my Lord, my Jesus, only my Jesus overcame the grave. You can't have or steal my victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord, thank you. I'm so grateful, so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. 